in the previous episode we went over decision trees and how they can be built using information gain. This episode builds upon that, so I would recommend watching that episode before watching this one. Take a look at the following rice data. Here we gather the major axis length, the extent, and the class of the rice. Zero represents gonin rice, and one jasmine rice. If we were to fit a single decision tree to this data, we get the following. So here we're asking, is the extent less than or equal to 0.58? If yes, then we classify the point as jasmine rice, and if no, gonin rice. In this example here, we make two misclassifications, where in the first two examples here, the extent is greater than or equal to 0.58. So we answer no to this question, and we predict gonin rice. But for these two cases, these are jasmine rice, and so this single decision tree classifier makes two mistakes. And this is an accuracy of 0.71 to two decimal places. Perhaps we can do better by fitting a random forest classifier. So let's go over how to build a random forest classifier. Building a random forest classifier consists of the following steps. First, to take multiple samples of our dataset, followed by building a decision tree on each sample. And lastly, we take the majority output of each decision tree as a final output of the classification algorithm. So for the first step, we take multiple samples of our dataset. So here is our original dataset. And, and here we take three samples. Notice here in sample two, we have the same entry twice. That is because we are sampling without replacement. And this is known as bootstrapping. And in this case, we choose five entries in each sample dataset. We can now move on to the second step, which is to build a decision tree on each sample. So here we have three decision trees built on each sample dataset. And these three decision trees here form our random forest classifier. Lastly, we take the majority output of each decision tree. For example, let's, let's take a look at the first entry of our dataset. For the first decision tree built, we predict that this rice is jasmine rice, since the extent is not less than or equal to 0.77. For the second decision tree, the major axis length is less than or equal to 155.63, in which case we predict jasmine rice. For the third decision tree, the extent is larger than or equal to 0.61, and so we predict gonin rice. Two of our decision trees predicted jasmine rice and one predicted gonin rice. Since we take the majority output as the final output of our classifier, we predict jasmine rice for this entry. Here is a table that looks at each entry and the output of each individual decision tree and the output of the final random forest classifier. The final output is simply the majority output for each case. Here we have an accuracy of 0.86 to two decimal places, which is higher than our single decision tree classifier. Let's now move on to some advantages and disadvantages of a random forest classifier. Some advantages of a random forest classifier is that they generally outperform a single decision tree classifier, as I've just demonstrated. And also, fitting multiple decision trees on samples of the dataset can help reduce overfitting. Some disadvantages include it is difficult to interpret this algorithm since multiple decision trees are built, and so we would have to plot each individual decision tree to get an idea of what our algorithm is doing. Also, there are gradient boosted trees that tend to perform better than random forest classifiers on complex data. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.